finally, we return to London for a look back in time to the glory and splendor of two important eras of cultural history. Behind the imposing ionic columns of the British Museum, one of the finest displays ever staged, showing the wealth of the Roman Empire and the gradual emergence of Christianity within it. The exhibition covers five centuries from 300 AD to the 700s, and the constantly changing use of precious metals like gold and silver. This domed silver toilet casket dates from the 4th century and was found at the Esquiline Hill near Rome. An archaeological dig on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus in 1902 turned up one of the most historically important group of items on display. They're known as the David Plates, nine silver plates of varying sizes each of them depicting a time in the life of David. Until 1975, they were regarded as the earliest treasures to display Christian symbols. Even now, the plates represent the earliest Christian-inspired art. The biggest plate in the group is some 30 inches across. It's thought they may have been made to commemorate a specific event in the life of the Roman Emperor Heraclius, who held power from 610 AD to 641. Venus, a favorite of Roman artisans in every medium. This statuette in silver shows Venus braiding her hair as she rises from the sea. It was uncovered from the site of a Roman fort in Switzerland, along with numerous other treasures, and has been dated at about the second or third century AD. In all, 257 items make up the Swiss find known as the Kaiser Augs treasure. It's the largest late Roman hoard yet discovered. At one time, experts believed it may have been the personal property of the Emperor Julian, but later research has now disproved this. For students of Christianity and the religion's rise within the Roman Empire, the Water Newton hoard has special significance. These simple pots were made no later than the 4th century AD, making them the oldest examples of treasure with Christian references anywhere in the world. Well, at least the finds in Britain have played an important part, and probably the most exciting, or one of the most exciting, is this no Water Newton Hoard. What is actually the significance of this? Well, until two, just two years ago now, now, until February 1975, when this hoard was found in the ground, and which we didn't learn of till several months later, if you turned up any book that was at all helpful, you'd have found that the two earliest Christian church hordes known from anywhere were one from Canoscio in Italy, uh, which is just east of Florence, and one from southwest Turkey near Antalya. Both those hordes were buried in the 6th century AD. This hoard, which is a church hoard, is no later than the 4th century. It's very difficult to place it precisely within that century. It might even be the very beginning of the 4th century, but it's certainly not later than the 4th century AD. And by that simple fact, it's the earliest church uh, hoard of uh, precious plate from anywhere in the world. And it has turned up in Britain and is so uh, one of the most important historical hordes to have turned up uh, from the whole of the Roman period. The dominating feature of the exhibition is without doubt the great dish from the Mildenhall treasure. From the centerpiece showing the face of the sea god Oceanus to the elaborate details surrounding it, the dish is regarded as the most beautiful object to survive from Roman Britain. It was discovered by a farmer ploughing his field at Milden Hall in Suffolk. Unaware of its historical significance and value, he used it for many years as a drinks tray. The dish is almost two feet in diameter and weighs over 18 pounds.
the British Museum's exhibition has set out to place on visual record the artistic achievements of a period which is regarded by many as the Dark Age, a period spanning the fall of the Roman Empire and the emergence of modern Europe. From the birth of Christian-inspired art to a time when the church had a virtual monopoly on the painter and architect. At the National Gallery, a spectacular exhibition of late Gothic art. The collection's been drawn mainly from museums in the German city of Cologne, which was a vibrant center for the Gothic style in its final and most luxuriant phase at the end of the 15th century. Most of the artists are unknown. Indeed, the Cologne School is an unfamiliar one in Britain and other parts of the world. The exhibition offers a rare chance to admire the intricate detail and painstaking accuracy of the late Gothic artisans of the city. The dedication of the woodcarver is supremely evident in this statuette of Saint Jerome, one of the forefathers of the Christian Church. While the paintings and altarpieces recall scenes from the scriptures, the dress in each is easily identified with the style of the artist's own day, full flowing robes of rich colors and gold trimmings. Cologne in the 14 and 1500s was a rich, important city in Europe, and its prosperity was clearly reflected in its art, the aristocracy financing many works which are today regarded as important milestones in the progression of religious artistry. The style throughout is conservative and traditional. At this time, perspective and realism were just beginning to creep into European art. But the main preoccupation among the Cologne artists was with the magnificence of their subjects, and in this, they certainly excelled themselves in every medium, from stained glass windows to sculptures of the saints, from privately commissioned paintings to elaborate altarpieces. Despite the sweeping changes of the High Renaissance, the late Gothic school in Cologne held its head high for many years, largely due to the vision of the city's masters and their followers throughout Europe a vision which through exhibitions like this is now finding a wider appreciation throughout the world.